So we're going to hop straight into today's webinar on AAV. And here's just an overview of what we will be talking about today. So we're going to start with the background of viral gene delivery in case some people weren't here last week. Um, and then we'll go over AAV 101. So what it is, how it works and the benefits of using it. We'll go over some safety guidelines, how to produce and use AAV. And then lastly, we'll wrap up with a solutions and services section um, where I tell you kind of what we offer at Origin to help you um, if you choose to use AAV. So starting out with the background on viral gene delivery, I'm going to be talking about the most popular viral vectors, viruses versus plasma transfection, and then Lenti versus AAV, since these are the two most popular options for viral gene delivery. So here's a list of the most popular viruses that are used for gene delivery. We have lentivirus, adenovirus, adeno-associated virus, and herpes simplex virus. And last week we talked about lentivirus, um, but today we're gonna be talking about AAV, as you know. And lentivirus is the most popular, but AAV is a close second, and the popularity for AAV is continuing to grow. So this is definitely an avenue that you wanna consider when you're looking at your options for uh, viral tools. And a couple of you may have already seen this table if you came to last week's webinar, but I just want to make sure I show it again in case someone hasn't um, seen it before because it is a really great table that shows the difference between viruses and plasma transfection. So you can see the process for um, using viruses is much more simple. You just add it to your cells and you kind of take advantage of the natural capability of, of them to uh, infect uh, certain cell lines. Whereas for plasma transfection, uh, you have to make sure you have an effective transfection reagent or you have to do electroporation. So usually the process is um, a bit longer when you're doing plasma transfection. Also with gene delivery efficiency, viruses are have a very high transduction efficiency. Once again, you're kind of using that um, natural infectivity that viruses have, whereas plasma transfection, it can vary. Sometimes that transfection step fails and you run into problems, especially with um, certain cells like neurons or certain stem cells. It can be kind of difficult. So a lot of people using um, or studying those type of cells do opt for viruses. Next, you have cell spectrum. So viruses can infect a wide range of cells, um, hard to transfect cells to easy ones. So it's a uh, much better option because you have a better range of cells that you can infect, whereas plasma transfection, you're limited. They can't always get into neurons, for example. Um, and then for genome integration, for viruses, the chances are higher. So it depends on the virus you're actually using. For instance, lentivirus does integrate into the genome, whereas AAV actually doesn't, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, and then for plasma transfection, it's a very low chance. But the benefit of uh, getting genome integration is that stable expression. Um, and then lastly, for in vivo studies, using viruses is a good option as well, With whereas plasma transfection, you can have limited uh, applications. And with viruses, you also have, um, depending on the virus you're using, low immunogenicity. So they're a good option for in vivo studies. And here is a table comparing Lenti and AAV. So because these are the most popular um, vectors used, I figured it would be very helpful to compare these two. So with Lentivirus, it actually has a larger carrying capacity. The carrying capacity for Lentivirus is about 9 kb, whereas for AAV, it's about 4.7, so about half of Lenti. And then for AAV, you actually get tissue specificity because um, you can choose certain serotypes and certain serotypes um, will transfect certain cells. So for instance, you can use um, AAV2 to target certain muscle tissues um, where you don't, you're not able to do that with lentivirus. And then with lentivirus, it, you actually get genome integration, um, whereas you don't get that for AAV. AAV actually stays in the episome, um, but they both uh, do provide stable gene expression. It's just that Lenti is, um, is well, Lenti is stable gene expression, whereas AAV is transient uh, gene expression. And then for um, in vivo use, AAV is slightly, slightly more safe than Lentivirus because Lentivirus is derived from HIV-1, whereas um, AAV is, is a dependovirus. So it's dependent on having um, other viruses uh, present in order to actually replicate. So it's replication deficient naturally. 
Uh, and then for AAV, you'll notice that the titers are higher. So like mm, for a lenti, the titers can range from like 10 to the 7 to 10 to the 10, whereas AAV, you'll see titers ranging from 10 to the 10 to 10 to the 13. Now we're going to move on to AAV 101. So we're going to go over what is AAV, how it works, the benefits of it, and then we're going to go over serotype selection, which is a unique thing that AAV offers. So AAV is a small non-enveloped virus, and it's a part of the Parvoviridae family, and it includes 12 different AAV serotypes. So in the Parvoviridae family, it belongs to a genus called Dependoparvovirus because it needs the presence of a helper virus, um, like I said before, such as adenovirus, for additional genes that are needed for replication and assembly. So um, adenovirus is replication deficient naturally. And um, studies have identified AAV only needs some helper virus products, um, such as E1A or E1B. So these can be provided by a separate vector if you're trying to get AAV to replicate. You don't necessarily need to add adenovirus um, for that to happen or, or any other helper virus. You can just provide the products essentially. And AAV has a single-stranded DNA genome compared to Lenti, which had the single-stranded RNA genome that we talked about. Um, but this DNA genome contains three genes. So you have the rep gene, which is for replication, cap, which is for capsid, and then AAP, which is for assembly. And the coding sequences are flanked by um, ITRs or inverted terminal repeats that are required for genome replication and packaging. So the rep proteins are involved in the replication um, and the VP proteins are components that make up the uh, virus capsid. And the, uh, the VP proteins also code for the assembly of the activating protein AAP. Now moving on to how AAV works. So after the attachment of AAV to the cell surface receptor of the target cell, the virus gets internalized by endocytosis. And then depending on the serotype, different receptors and co-receptors located on the uh, host membrane mediate the entry process. So AAV2, for example, can attach to heparin sulfate uh, proteoglycan uh, cell surface receptors, and then AAV3, 8, and 9 have been shown to attach to 3767 uh, kilodalton laminin receptors. So it really just depends on your serotype and which, uh, which cells they're going to target. And this mediates what tissues take up the actual AAV particle. And then you'll see that the vesicle is then transported um, it transports the virus to the nucleus. And then in the nucleus, the viral capsid releases the single-stranded DNA, which is then converted to double-stranded um, DNA. And then from here, the DNA can either be integrated into the host cell and be in a lysogenic phase or persist in an episomal state or the lytic phase. And the lytic phase is usually triggered by the presence of helper genes. Um, so as long as those helper genes are provided somehow, um, normally through a vector, then you'll get AAV gene expression. Actual integra integration into the host genome is very rare. Now we're going to talk about the benefits of AAV. And here's another table that compares AAV to Lenti, adenovirus, and other retroviruses. Um, so you can kind of see exactly what makes AAV um, special. So AAV can transduce both dividing and non-dividing cells uh, like most viruses, um, ex with the exception of the retrovirus um, at the bottom that only uh, infects dividing cells. Um, but it shares this benefit with lentivirus, and you basically exploit the virus's natural ability to penetrate the cellular membrane. You also get low immunogenicity, and it's thought that this is due to the inability to effectively transduce or activate antigen-presenting cells for AAV. So if you'll remember that I said AAV is slightly safer because it's naturally replication deficient, it's also safer for in vivo because um, of the, the fact that it doesn't really activate APCs. So Lenti is safe, Lenti is very safe, but AAV is even safer because of that. Um, and then you will have a low risk of insertional mutagenesis 
because AAV stays in the episome, it does not get inserted um, into the host genome. And then it also can't replicate, which I said, so it is very safe. And then you get that broad tropism when it's pseudotyped, um, so using those serotypes to target specific tissues. And I just want to take a moment to show everyone um, the an example of serotypes and what tissues that they can affect. So for instance, if you're looking to target pancreatic tissue, AAV8 is the best option for you. So out of all of the serotypes that um, that have been identified, AAV2 is the best studied serotype. And then AAV8 and 9 are also the most widely used in addition to AAV2. So AAV8 is widely used in liver studies, but you can also use AAV7, 9, and DJ. And then AAV9, it can actually pass the blood-brain barrier. So it's used in a lot of studies um, for the central nervous system. So it really just depends on your project and um, exactly what you're looking for. And another thing that you're going to want to consider is the cell types and the infectivity. So here's another table that has been normalized to AAV2. Um, this isn't the full table, but if you click on this link at the end of the webinar, when I send you these slides, you'll be able to click on the link and it will bring you to our website with the full table available. Um, but when dealing with serotypes of AAV, uh, you have to consider the cell type you're targeting because the infectivity can differ. So for example, um, in HEC293 cells, AAV2 and AAVDJ have high infectivity, but AAV5, for example, does not. And then if we look at CHO cells, AAV5 actually works really well in CHO cells. Um, so just consider the goals for your experiment when choosing serotypes and consider the cell lines. Now we're going to move on to the safety recommendations for using AAV. So AAV is inherently safe, as I mentioned, because they are naturally replication deficient compared to lentivirus. And there's also no need to do optimizations the way we had to do with Lenti, um, like we had to do a three prime UTR mutation um, so to ensure that there was self inactivation after the Lenti um, genome was integrated into the host genome. And then we also removed the TAT genes, etc. So these certain precautions we didn't need to do for AAV because it's already really safe. Um, now, wild type AAV does infect human and other primate species, but it's not known to cause disease and it's actually non-pathogenic. And despite the inherent safety of the virus, AAV particles can still pose some biohazard risk since the particles can transduce primary human cells. So while AAV can be handled in a BSL-1 environment, AAVs expressing oncogenes or toxins should be handled in a BSL-2 environment. So gloves, lab coat, under a biosafety cabinet or hood. Um, and we have a link that leads you to the biosafety data sheet um, if you want to learn more here. Moving on to how to produce and use AAV. So this section will include the steps to produce AAV particles, the factors that can affect your packaging efficiency, storage recommendations, and then actually using your particles for AAV infection. So at Origin, we package our AAV using HEC293 T cells. Um, so the first step you would do is plate your HEC293 cells, and then you're going to co-transfect the AAV transfer plasmid that's containing your um, gene of interest with the packaging plasmid. So we have a helper plasmid here and then a RepCap plasmid for, for packaging purposes. Then you will change the media and incubate this for 48 hours, and then um, you'll harvest the cell culture supernatants on day five. And from there, you can do um, purification and concentration titering. And then after that, you get um, really high quality and ideally high titer AAV ready for transduction. Moving on to the factors that affect the packaging efficiency. So you'll notice that these are the same factors that affects Lenti. So when you're using antivirus, you want to make sure that um, all of these things are taken into, taken into consideration. Um, so you want to make sure your DNA quality is good, especially the uh, 
the transfer plasmid that is containing your gene of interest. Um, you also want to make sure you have the optimal ratio of plasmids. So when it's talking about that ratio, it's talking about um, the transfer plasmid, repcat plasmid, and um, the helper plasmid. And it's important to use like an endo-free kit or if you want to do an ion exchange plasmid purification just to ensure that you're not introducing contamination while you're about to transfect all of the plasmids together and ensure that you have um, a good ratio of everything. The next uh, thing that you want to consider is the uh, fragment length. So as I mentioned before, the carrying capacity for AAV is about 4.7. So if you start to use larger inserts for AAV, this can sometimes affect the packaging and lead to a lower viral titer. The next thing is the health of the HEC293 T cells. So firstly, HEC293 T cells actually uh, lose packaging efficiency after many passages. So cells should not be used after culturing for like one to two months. And then secondly, the cells are happier when they're seeded the day before transfection. So this usually results in higher transfection efficiency. And then the last thing that you wanna consider is the transfection reagent that you're using. So um, for Lenti, we had a specific uh, Lenti transfection reagent that, um, that is used for Lenti packaging. But for AAV, we don't currently offer a specialized um, transfection reagent AAV packaging is usually results in a higher titer so um, there's not as much concern for that but just make sure you're using a really effective transfection reagent if for some reason you do get a lower titer and everything else looks good your DNA is good you didn't have any contamination that you notice um, your fragment size isn't that big it might be the transfection reagent so just something to keep in mind. Now moving on to the storage recommendations. So you can store AAV um, at negative 20 degrees Celsius short term. So this is two to three weeks. And then for a long term up to one year, it's the same as Lenti, so negative 80 degrees Celsius. And AAV is more stable than many viruses or proteins. And um, it can be frozen and thawed several times uh, to with minimal loss of activity, but it's best to avoid this. So you still are recommended to aliquot at least uh, 10 microliters per tube and use low protein binding tubes to avoid loss of any virus. Um, you also want to make sure that you don't introduce air into your samples by vortexing, blowing bubbles, or similar operations because um, this can result in protein denaturation. And most AAVs are actually very sticky and um, losses can occur if they're exposed to regular plastics. Um, if they're not frozen. So it's best to um, store thawed AAV in a siliconized or like I said, low protein binding tube and pipette it with a similar pipette. Uh, and AAV is also stored in um, Pleuronic F68 um, used at 0.001% in the formulation. Um, in the formulation buffer. So this will minimize the sticking if regular plastics are used. So now that you have hopefully produced um, really high quality and high titer AAV particles, it's time for um, AAV infection. So AAV um, MOI or multiplicity of infection ranges from 10,000 to 500,000, depending on the serotype and the cell type. Um, so this is what makes AAV slightly different than Lenti because for Lenti, if you remember, I had a table that had the recommended MOIs um, for each cell line. Um, AAV, since there are so many different serotypes, that definitely makes it more complex when you're trying to calculate the MOI. Um, so the appropriate amount of virus needed for the infection is crucial to the experimental results. So it's strongly recommended to infect your target cells with a reporter AAV control virus first. Um, and this would be in your preliminary study to determine the optimal MOI for, your, for you. Um, so after you uh, thaw your AAV particles on ice and you calculate the MOI, everything after that is pretty similar to Lenti. So you'll seed your cells and incubate them for 24 to 48 hours. You will add your virus. And then the cells are harvested three to seven days post transduction. And as a general guideline, um, people usually wait about a week to use the transduced particles for further applications. Um, 
Another thing to note is that it's not necessary to remove, change, or add viruses. Um, they, they don't have to be removed after 6 to 12 hours post-infection. You can, but you really don't need to. Um, and like I said, it can take three to seven days after AAV infection to detect gene expression. Um, so that's usually why people wait um, before moving forward with those further applications. And a detailed protocol will be made public on our website very soon. So once that's made public, then I will make sure to send all of you a copy. And lastly, we're going to wrap everything up by talking about the solutions and services that we offer um, that can aid you if you decide to use AAV. Starting out with the AAV vectors that we have available. So you'll see that we have five total. The first four are for ORF or overexpression, while the last one is for shRNA or knockdown. And it's very convenient to utilize our system because you can um, use the precision shuttle system, which makes it very easy to subclone. So you can easily move your insert between AAV vectors or just between any destination vector that is available on our website. So this applies to Lenti vectors, CRISPR vectors, other mammalian um, vectors with different reporter options. Um, it's just a very convenient way to subclone. It's just a simple cut and ligase process. You also have multiple reporter options. So you have MCTDK or flag tag, uh, GFP, RFP, um, and keep in mind that say you really like this, um, this RFP vector, but you want a different reporter option that you don't see available. Um, you can always just request it and this will change to like a custom, um, a custom order and we can easily change out the reporter option for you. Uh, so that's something that's pretty common and very easy to do. Next, um, it's very convenient to sequence your target after cloning because there are um, primer binding sites on the uh, vectors. So BGI forward and AC GFP reverse primers are um, used, but if you actually go to each of the, of the AAV vector product pages, you'll see the primers listed. So a lot of customers will um, get the vector as well as the uh, primers all in um, one order. So it's very convenient. And then lastly, suitable for shRNA knockdown. So our AAV vector that is used for shRNA is very popular and very successful. Um, so definitely consider this option if you're looking for that tissue specific uh, knockdown. So this could be a good option for you. So now we're going to take a look at AAV control particles. So control particles are efficient tools used to quantify transduction efficiency into your target cell population. So these control particles are actually ultra purified and there's a guaranteed titer of greater than 10 to the 13 for all of the control particles that you receive from us. So that is one benefit of getting those control particles, but also I just wanted to make sure that you all know that the list of control particles we have is larger than this. So I'm only showing six right now, but there are actually 10 available. Um, and this ranges from um, AAV2 to AAV RH10, AAV1, um, AAV7. So those are just a few that aren't seen on this table here. Um, and it's recommended that you use the control particle with the same serotype and promoter as the AAV particle that you're using that contains the gene of interest. So something to keep in mind as well when you're choosing AAV control particles. And in case you don't see the particle that you're looking for, we do um, have a standard custom service, which I'll get into in the next slide. But you can also, you don't only have to get um, custom particles with certain genes inserted into them um, that you're looking to study, you can also request custom uh, control particles to be made for you. So we do that all the time. And then also these control particles are rigorously validated. So um, the AAV titer is determined by qPCR and then the purity is determined by silver staining and then lastly the transduction efficiency is analyzed in vitro using transduction in HEC 293 T cells. So at the end of this webinar feel free to actually go on to our website. You can go to this link right here and it'll bring you to the entire table and you can look at exactly what we have available. Um, there are two different sizes that you can get 50 microliters and then um, two vials of the 50 microliters or 100 microliters. 
So as I was saying before, there is a custom customizing option through our AAV packaging service. So if you find an AAV um, control particle that you need a different reporter molecule or you don't see the serotype on the website that you need, um, we can still make those AAV particles through our packaging service. And it's very convenient because um, you can choose from our large clone portfolio. So you're more than likely gonna be able to find the clone that you need and just say that you would like it packaged into an AAV vector and then create particles from it. So it's really nice because you can either choose your gene and then select your serotype and then we package it for you. So you would provide the design or you can provide us with the AAV plasmids. You just send your DNA and then you wait for us to send the virus back to you. So it saves a lot of time and hassle. Um, there's also a really competitive titer. So uh, the same with the AAV control particles, we make sure that these are, um, you have options to purify it um, and do ultra purification or just standard purification, um, but you get that guaranteed titer of 10 to the 13. And especially if you're working in vivo, a lot of people do opt for that ultra purified um, particle to get sent to them. And then you also have a lot of flexibility. So not only with um, the purification options, but you are able to customize the volume that you would like to receive as well as the titers. We also have a very fast turnaround time. So going back to being able to choose from that large clone portfolio, since we have a lot of them in stock, um, then a lot of the times, especially if your gene is common, we don't have to go through the gene synthesis um, if it's just a standard gene, it's not like mutated or anything. So the turnaround time can is on average two to three weeks. And then we also have 11 different serotypes for you to choose from. So that's AAV1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, RH10, DJ, and PHP.EB. So feel free to request a free quote using the button down here. It will lead you to the um, page that has a bit more information on our packaging service. And then you can go ahead and request a quote and it will take no longer than two minutes to submit. And then someone from our technical support um, team will reach out to you within 24 hours. And, um, and then you can get a quote and do some comparisons to see if this is the right fit for you. And to conclude the solutions and services section of this webinar, I've included a summary here. So um, if you're ever looking for AAV vectors, whether it's for overexpression or knockdown, or if you're looking for control particles, definitely take a look at our website and keep in mind that if you don't see something that you're looking for, there's always the option for you, you, you to utilize the custom AAV packaging service, um, whether it's customizing an existing product or um, making an entirely new product. Uh, we work very closely with our the researchers that we collaborate with, so um, definitely take a look at, at the website and contact me if you have any questions. And our portfolio is rapidly growing, so I will make sure to keep all of you up to date via email about the new AAV solutions that we launch next year that will aid you in your research. And here's just a consolidated slide with all of the um, relevant pages and links that were mentioned throughout the webinar. So you have an AAV flyer that just gives another overview of the solutions and services section that we talked about. And then you have the biosafety uh, recommendations sheet. And then these are links to the relevant web pages, as I mentioned. And then I've just included a TrueOrf application guide. Um, on page 18, there's a really helpful shuttling protocol that talks about the cut and ligase process in case you want to shuttle and insert into one of the AAV vectors that I've um, mentioned in this webinar. So that's one of the benefits of um, sticking to and using Origin system is that you have a really easy shuttling system. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. And here is just our contact information. So um, if you have any questions, especially about this webinar about AAV or Lenti, email me directly and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And then I've also included our customer support and tech support teams emails as well. And they answer within 24 hours. So thank you everyone so much for spending this time with me. Um, I hope you learned a lot about AAV. And now I want to open up the floor to questions that you may have. So go ahead and use the chat box feature and we can jump right into the Q&A.